Hi folks, welcome to another little fast episode of Ugly Dog Lures. So I've been asked about my shop setup. So uh, let's just do a quick tour. This won't take long, maybe three, four, five minutes. It ain't very long, ain't much out of your life. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Charlie, my wife's name is Melissa and we're ugly dog lures so uh my shop is just a little old 10 by 12 morgan building that uh we come in we insulated it and sheeted it and put air conditioning and heating in it and uh kindly wired it redneck style so we're good you know how that goes so we're going to start the tour and we're going to start over here on this side uh this is my magnifying light it moves wherever I want to move it on this table and it was given to me by Melinda and Chris some friends of ours uh, up here above if you look up above this is my microphone it's got a fuzzy rat on the end of it cat's tail huh it's called a cat's tail always oh, called a cat's tail I'm sorry folks not a rat it's a cat I don't hear very well uh, so that's my microphone set up if you're coming across here this is where I store some of my paints. If you start up here at the top, these are just miscellaneous light colored stuff. It's got like linen and white and uh, just there's some different little things in there that I very seldom ever use. If you come over to this one, you got oranges, reds, and yellows in this one. And I've got a bunch of them in there. And this is all greens. These are all dark colors, dark burgundies, blacks. Uh, anything like that browns is in here stored in here if you come right down here on this corner this is where i keep my glazes my dragonfly glazes and my iridescent paints and i keep more epoxy behind them and you know a sponge here my computer here my airbrush stand and my airbrush is here and this is all blues except for these four on this corner and they're purples different purples so that's pretty much that and I also uh, keep my strawberry fig bars out here if y'all ever want to come by and have a cookie with me this stuff out here too so uh, you move on this way let me step back a little bit I got my little heater in here and up above I store some bigger things of glitter across there and uh, just miscellaneous stuff over there in that corner I keep uh I've got stickers, ugly dog stickers. I got four inch and two inch, two. So I keep them hanging out back here. This is where I dry my lures when I hang them. And this is one that we worked on yesterday and it's a ugly dog version of a trout, rainbow trout. And back here in this corner is where I keep all my baits that people bring me that they want me to redo for them. This is a spinner bait that I have started. I've got the blades outside drying on it for it and I'll put new skirting on it and repaint the head on it so that's just a little old fast little hobby you know eat fit, eat sleep fish repeat that's the story of my life other than there ought to be a big W O R K in the middle of that because I got to go to work every day and I got my little TV thanks to my wife she felt sorry for me and went and bought me a TV so up above right here, all the way across, is where I store my painted lures. I just keep them up there to keep the packaging nice and straight on. Folks, uh, it's so much fun doing this. I wish everybody in the world could do stuff like this. Now if you start back down here, this is where I keep my FX paints. And I've got actually four color shifts up here. But they're in a bigger deal, so... I keep them there in my business cards and in these things I keep all my rings this is what I make keychains and stuff out of for people and this one hooks and this is all rings different sizes of rings split rings and in this one right here I keep all my dressed hooks for my top water baits and if you look down here this is where how I store my lures 
2.5 square bills, deep divers, spooks, 1.5 square bills, round back poppers, S cranks, spitting frogs. <clears throat> I just, you know, just everything you can think of is down there almost. Rattle traps, you know, suspending jerk baits, jerk baits, just all of us down there. And if you come on around behind me here, this is a, a new project that my wife has started. She's doing inline spinners, handmade inline spinners, glow in the dark, gold beads, silver beads, the whole nine yards, painted blades, unpainted blades. She's having a lot of fun doing that, I think. Let's talk about my compressor and my guns. I went to Hobby Lobby, finally, and I bought this Sparmax compressor. I had bought two compressors previously to this one and I didn't even get a hundred baits painted on both of them before they burn out. They were not the quality of this. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've probably painted several thousand baits with this compressor now and it just hums along just like it's supposed to. So if you're going to buy a compressor, I would recommend a Sparmax compressor. Uh, this is not a paid advertisement for them, it's just what I know. So get that out there right quick. And our water brushes, folks. This is a HPCS, and that's this brush right here. This is an HPCS eye water. This is a very, very good brush. I love it. Uh, I have this other eye water here too, and this is an eye water Neo, and I use it quite a bit. But I use this one mostly to do all my priming with, and I save my big expensive brush for the other parts of the bait. But that's pretty much it. I, I would highly recommend you go with the eye water. And uh, as far as the compressor, I have had wonderful luck with my Sparmax compressor. It's never failed me one time. Uh, like I said, I had bought two previously and didn't even get 100 baits out of them before they both burn up. So that's what I would recommend, folks. Uh, so if you come over here, I've got this old dresser and it was given to me by a really good friend of mine. Greg and Kathy Bryant, they gave this to me. Uh, and I just use it for storage. It's, I keep stuff in here, you know, like gun targets and all kinds of stuff like that. And this right over here is where I lay my prime baits that are ready for paint. So I keep them over here. I never ever prime a bait that's like this. It just gets straight paint and most usually it gets an iridescent paint on it because it has the sides that are colored in it already. Uh, I store my painting racks right up here. My helping hands is really what they're called. And uh, all up through here, this is all metallic paints, different colors. These are all Createx paints. And these are all color shift down here. Paints that I store down here. Of course, we have our studio lights. Uh, this, this is Bob. Bob's my best friend. Bob's my fish, folks. Kind of like old Bob. My son gave me that a long time ago, and I still have it, and I'll probably have it till the day I leave the earth. So if you come on over here. This is uh, stuff that's ready to be packaged. Uh, these are ready to be processed, which that means that they get rolled on and the cards get rolled on and all of that. These are going to be shipped out. So... And uh, these are keychains, folks, that I make. I, every once in a while I get a lure that the epoxy just ain't exactly what I want, and I will not sell that lure. I'll just make a keychain out of it. And most usually I just give them away. So no big deal. And the rest of it's just some storage. Down here, these are all ready to be packaged. So we, we have probably close to 500 now ready to be gone. Uh, over here... It's just a cabinet that was gave to me, and I, I kind of keep old lures and stuff, and stuff that I've made for my kids that, you know, they really want to keep a hold of forever. So it goes in here, and there's some old, old reels in here, uh, some old lures. A lot of times I'll go to auctions, folks, and I buy 
them old rods and reels and I'll bring them things home and I'll rebuild those reels and I'll give them the kids because kids need to be fishing. They need to be, get off out in front of those games and they need to go out fishing. They need to be outside and I'll rebuild them and give them to, to kids. I do that a lot and I even fix tackle boxes up and give to kids. My wife will tell you that. Uh, and if you come on around here, we got our air conditioning system and uh, we had a big old tripod out here folks and uh, it just was too much in this little bitty shop. So uh, we got to thinking, mostly my wife, because she's got more time to think than I do. I'm just kidding folks, she's a good wife. And we built our own tripod, and it's not even a tripod, it's just something that we came up with and we built and it works 10 times better than a tripod, it don't move. You're going to have to get awful close to knock that thing off the wall. That tripod's been knocked over more than once. I just don't like them. So we came up with our own redneck ingenuity and fixed our own. So that's pretty much my little shop, folks. So I'm actually looking at buying a uh, 10 by 24 shop and uh, moving in here and redoing and putting electricity in it and redoing the shop and making a lot bigger shop because I am going to expand. I'm expanding now. I'm expanding into the soft baits and God only knows what else. I may even start making rods. I did that once, twice, three, four, five, maybe 20 times as a young man. <laughs> Made fly rods. But I'm thinking about doing it again. And if I do, I hope y'all will follow me on this journey because it's going to be a bumpy ride. You folks have a blessed day. I'll catch you later.